Welcome to the Euro Express, and this week we head to Belgium where we meet an old friend, Dr. Amal Marugi, and we introduce ourselves to a new friend, Selina de Meyer. Selina, Amal, welcome on board the Euro Express. Thank you, Kevin. Selina, you work, uh, you live in Bruges, uh, which is a very beautiful city with a very beautiful cathedral, but your profession is also one which uh, deals in beauty, no? Yeah, absolutely, because photography means actually uh, writing with light. So for me, it's very important to, to create beauty, because beauty is something, it comes from God, and it's a way to God. So without words, with my work, I hope that when I create this beauty, that I can touch the hearts of people and bring them closer to God, because in this world, when you look around and artists, they create a lot of works that are shocking. And uh, yeah, that's because they think art needs to be shocking. But I think that art needs to charm people because that goes much more deeper. And it's much more difficult. And you bring much more beauty into the world, which the world actually needs. And that's the problem because a world without God is 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 dead. So a world without beauty is 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 doomed. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's a very interesting way in which to think of it. Now you work in a spe in specific medium, which is through pho photography, either moving or still. What attracted you to that particular medium? Well, to be honest, uh, I touched uh, a camera when I was 18 years old. Before, I always made uh, paintings and drawings and because uh, in my family, I come from a very artistic family. My father is also uh, an artist. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like very normal to, to create art. But suddenly uh, I discovered this medium of photography to, be, uh, to have this interaction with, with people. And um, for me, that's also a beautiful grace because at this time, of my life when I do uh, portraits and I meet people uh, it's really a beautiful grace because they enter here uh, I have my studio here and when they see in uh, my apartment a little corner uh, with uh, religious aspects or they see what Selena you have a bible here it's like yes and then they ask more questions so there starts a conversation in the first mm -hmm. place which makes them very curious. And, and it's not only a testimony I can give like this because love is, is, is something that does not push itself. It's, it would not be love. So it's something that gives. And if people want to do something with it, that's their choice. But for me, it's, it's important that I talk. Certainly in these times with our art, we can create so much more. It's, if words can't do it, the, 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 the image can do it. It's the same as, as with our deeds. In the first place, we, we need to act the way of love. And if necessary, you need to use the words. But if people ask me words, of course, then I, then I give them the words. But I hope in the first place that my art can be the words. Yes. Now, Amal, talking of starting a conversation, you started a charity Aradin, which specifically wishes to start a conversation about image and about beauty in the Arabic world in general, but in particular in Iraq. Tell us a little bit about why you started that and, and how in some ways it's related very much to the sorts of things that Selena is now saying. Yeah, you know, like it resonates completely with what I've been doing and thinking, you know, like I'm, I'm really grateful to Selena. Uh, why I started it? Because um, I'm a linguist. And I love stories, uh, but I love art as well. For me, art is, as, as she said, it's a language. It is you tell your story through words and through through art. Um, when I started my uh, my charity, no one could understand in the middle of the you know like it was uh, um, I think it was Syrian civil war. It was 2010, 2011, and. Um, you know, people were asking, like when I was trying to explain to them why it's important, they couldn't understand and they, they, they would say, oh, you know, I prefer to give my money to 
um, to, to provide food and shelter for these uh, people. What do you do with art and manuscripts? So whatever I was trying to explain to them, you know, it was really, you know, falling on deaf ears. And I still remember when I was in Cambridge, I was following um, a training on um, how to use social media in, a, in the academic world. I was trying to explain to an engineer what I was doing. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? I really can't care less about uh, a church or a mosque being um, bombed. And I said, neither do I. Actually, it's not about a church or a mosque because Christians don't need a church to pray and to worship. Muslims don't, don't need a mosque to uh, uh, pray and worship. The Jews don't need it because the Jewish uh, people have survived and their faith has survived after spending 40 years in the desert. So it's not about whether it's religion and survival of religion. It's about the story that is behind these churches. It tells something about who we are as human beings. Um, it's our story, uh, aspirations, pain, hope. And also when uh, I think that everyone remembers the, um, the statue, the Buddha statue of Bamiyan when it was destroyed. You know, I'm not a Buddhist and I cannot care less about Buddhist statues being destroyed. But I think that everyone would agree that when they touch that statue, they touch something that belonged to humanity. Yes. So it is really, you know, like it's our story. And also we are created in the image of God, you know, like so images for us convey something. And we have to know, you know, like she was talking about how important it is to to reflect the right way of, um, or, you know, like also to express in the right way your art and beauty. And I think that's, that's where it comes, you know, um, what's the difference between the true image of God and the false image of God, and you have all the idols and everything. So, you know, like there's a lot behind it. In 2014, unfortunately, everyone woke up to what ISIS was doing, and suddenly we were thrown in the spotlight. You know, we were, we, we were a small charity, basically. Why? Because um, we could see what other people couldn't see, unfortunately. It was a little bit too late, but it reminded the world that, you know, these manuscripts, these images, these statues, are not just something that belong to the past. They are not just statues. They are not only material things. It is really our story, and it's the story that connects us to all the generations that there were before us. I, I think I think you're that that's absolutely right, and, and something we became very consciously aware of, particularly in countries like Iraq, where people were trying to eradicate a story, a history, through the images that were being defaced or destroyed, or through the buildings that were being obliterated. Um, you, you, must, you must have been very aware that there was, a kind of, there was a kind of an attempt to rewrite history by the destruction of the image. You know, they, they've done that. They've tried even in the time of Saddam Hussein, for example, there are all these old churches that were turned, either destroyed or turned into mosques, but you have on every single stone Aramaic script. And really, they will send masons just to remove all the Aramaic script you know, like of these um, of these stones, you know, it is in, in, indeed erasing your history. Um, but, you know, when your history, it, it's not only written in stones, but also it's written in your memory and in your heart. So that's that's why I just thought, you know, this is maybe they can destroy the stone, but they cannot destroy the memory that we have. They cannot destroy its beauty. And, you know, she um, Selena spoke about uh, about beauty and, you know, the um, one of the motives or slogans of uh, of Aradin were, you know, we, we've we've quoted it from um, uh, Dostoevsky, beauty will save the world. Yes. And it is indeed that beauty will save the world. And I still remember when I was little and an, an old Arab man, you know, like he was, um, he, he saw something very beautiful. And he exclaimed and he said, wow, that's really beautiful. It's like from God. God is, is, be is beauty and he loves everything that's beautiful. And it really stayed with me. It is something that unites us. And this, this is where I just thought, you know, it's really culture and beauty that can unite so many different people, despite Absolutely. the religious divide, you know? So some people Absolutely. don't understand why interreligious dialogue doesn't work always, but you know, intercultural dialogue always works. And there is this beauty, this cultural aspect that can unite us because this is basically who, what we are. We are human beings, you know, and yes. beauty is in everyone and us because we are all created in the image and likeness of God. Selena, 
I'm sure you wouldn't disagree with Amal quoting Dostoevsky about uh, beauty will save the world. You, you work in a medium which is uh, striking sometimes. The beauty is sometimes in the striking nature of the portraits or the, the, the images that are confronted. But also you must be also very conscious of how powerful images are increasingly in our world. I mean, certainly in journalism, we are aware of some very famous photographs down through the years, which have almost changed the course of history in terms of what they're representing. And um, so it's both something of beauty that you're sometimes presenting, but it's also something which is very powerful as a medium. Would you agree? Actually, there is, for me, there is, there is also this, this inner beauty, which can never be destroyed. And it lives in all people. And that's something that comes from God, because for me, there is nothing more powerful than photographing a woman with, which, 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 who give her life uh, to Christ and who lives from the source that is Christ. So that is a love and a power that lives in your heart, which nobody can separate us. So everything can be destroyed, but not that beauty that lives in your heart. And when I make portraits, you can see that beauty of those people in their eyes. I also make portraits of, of the girls from, from Miss Belgium. So that's a completely different world. But I, I, I reject to make po photographs of the girls uh, with their, their nude bodies. And that I don't do. Because for me, it's about the soul of those girls. They are beautiful. They don't need those makeups. They, they don't need to, 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 to do all those things on their faces. For me, it's about that inner beauty. And I try to capture that and to show these girls like, look, you're beautiful just the way you are. And you don't have to do anything about that. Look at yourself. Uh, and for me, it's, it's, it's really a grace as a photographer that I can show them how they really are, who they are, that they, they, they are beautiful, the way God created them. And for them, it's like, wow, actually, yes, without makeup, I don't look so bad. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it makes me mm -hmm. happy to, 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 to give a little piece of, 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 of sight yes. back. So, so I think, Selena, that sorry. there are so many girls who would like to listen to you, honestly, because there's so <laughs> much pressure, especially on young girls, yes, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's just rediscovering the beauty of the soul and how it reflects on the face, yeah. But, Selena, you, I, the photographers in particular, you sometimes uh, operate in, in, in two, a juxtaposition of two very different worlds. Because you can have you can have the high end sort of models, which which is a lot of it is artifice. Okay, a lot of it is 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 an image which you are creating, which isn't actually real. And yet, I've seen some of your photography, very beautiful photography of people, young people or religious at the World Youth Day, and the beauty, as you say, shines out without a piece of makeup anywhere or any particular lighting or camera angle. They just appear beautiful. I mean, does it make you sort of wonder about, the, I mean, the, I think you already know and maybe you've alluded to it, but the nature of beauty is, is I mean, it sounds cliched, but it's an inner gift, but it's also a supernatural thing, really, isn't it? Mm. Yes. So that's why I can't explain it. But for me, there is, it's like, it's like the truth, you know, for me, there is one truth and the truth is a person. It's, it's, it's Jesus Christ. And yes. for me, it's the same with beauty. It's like, Actually, people discuss about it, but a little baby, a little child will hear the same difference when you put on rock and roll very hard or classical music. A plant will die when they hear this bad, <laughs> if you know what I mean, music, heavy music, with all respect for the people who like to listen to it. But for me, it's like not the music that makes my heart calm. You, Celine... Selena, I mean a film about the Eucharist, about adoration, uh, which uh, was, it's, it's called Come and See. And, and I believe it won an award, is that correct? Yeah. You, you, you chose to shoot that in black and white. Uh, and I wonder what your thinking was around that. Uh, actually, I love black and white because it, it shows much more the soul of an image because mm. color is misleading and black and white shows much more the accents of light. So there is a point when the little boy enters the church and where the light is uh, on the cross of Jesus. So that light gets much more attention and there's a silence in the whole church. Only the wind you can hear when the door opens. So there is, it's an unspoken movie, everyone can understand. And there's only music sometimes in the movie, the first part, 
but there is a part in the church that's completely completely silence and then these little accents because it's always in in simplicity that the power of god lies yes. people search always special effects in movies but actually it's it's in the simplicity you don't need much to create beauty look at look even the image behind amal in her house like you know it's 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 an image of a landscape for me, also that, it's, it's beauty, because that landscape, there is no human being who can create a landscape like that. It's, it's beauty. If you stand there, if you look at that image, it's like, wow, you know? It's, it's really interesting. When I, when I looked at it, it reminded me of some silent films from the silent film era. And uh, it's a genre that I'm particularly interested in, and I think it's, it's, it's underrated today, actually. I mean, um, there, there were a number of very eminent filmmakers in Hollywood and also in Europe that saw the coming of sound as breaking just the sort of spell that you're talking about there, which was one of light and one of shade and one of storytelling through visuals, not using lots of sounds or not telling people the story, but having to reach into the store of their own storytelling through visual aids. So I, th I think you're part of a very, very long tradition, which stretches right back to the start of photography. But you said something at the start about writing with light, which I think is a, I don't know what you think, Amal, I think that's a beautiful image, uh, which obviously has a biblical reference, uh, a resonance, no? It's, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. You know, like I really, I can listen to Selena till morning, you know, like, um, <sighs> Um, yes, I mean, now when I was listening to her, I was thinking of the first chapter of the Bible, you know, like, um, I think many people have problems with, uh, or they don't understand, or they are embarrassed about the first chapter of the Bible with the creation. Mm. Um, you know, it's again, it's the language, if you can read it in Hebrew, everything will, will, uh, will change. It is one of the most beautiful chapters in the Bible. I absolutely love that chapter. Uh, once I could read it in Hebrew, and then you talk about light, let there be light, you know, it is really, it's, it's the beginning. So, and what she was telling us about the story, you know, can tell a story for me, you know, like I've been brought up with, with stories, you know, this is, um, it's our oral tradition. And there are, you know, like that you can tell stories and you can use words, which lead you to be silent and contemplate and you can um, you can produce the, the beautiful art that uh, Selena is producing, you know. So I think that there is also the language. For me, God is word. So it's the word of God incarnate. So that is, you know, it's the image and the word together. And for me, that's culture. You know, it is how I was brought up with stories. It is, yes. you know, everything around, even the Bible, you know, stories. I, I've learned my catechism through stories, honestly. Yes. You know, like I, I don't, I didn't study... Um, uh, yes, of course, history. That's you know, people love history. They uh, they they tell you all the story, but it wasn't philosophical. It wasn't, you know, all these complicated uh, books. Yeah. They were just all the truths of the faith were told, and I was taught through stories. And this is what the Bible does. This is what Jesus does, actually. Well, you're you're making me think, uh, Amal, of the uh, prologue of John's Gospel, which is all about the Word and also the light, the light coming in, and the darkness could not extinguish it. Uh, and in some ways, what we're getting there is, is something of the incarnation, but also something of the tools with which we humans communicate with each other through the arts. You, you said you're writing with, with light, uh, Selena. Do you see a, a very much, a, I mean, it's, a, it's the luminous light of Christ, I guess, for us Catholics that, that, you, that is inspiring you, no? Yes, absolutely. Because in the first place, for me, I see myself actually, I'm a Christian. And in the second place, I'm a photographer. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's, it's very important to always, before every project, also that short film of Come and See, uh, our whole team, we were with four people creating this movie. It was a priest, the mother of a little boy, and the little boy and me. And actually the fifth, fifth person, Jesus himself, of course, and we prayed before the start of every shot, every day. So at the end of the day, we prayed also to say thank you. And there was one moment when we forgot to pray and it didn't go well. <laughs> really? So for me, it's, yes. Isn't that interesting? So for me, it's, yes, for me, it's, it's really without prayer, no. 
Don't make decisions. Don't do, do, do. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, would you suggest that art is a form of prayer? And, I, and I'm, I'm thinking of just what Amal referred to there. She, she referred to the idea of the word and the image as a, a contemplative act. And I find particularly amongst certain still photography, still photography at its best, like some of your shots, make you stop. They make you pause. They make you think. And the very best ones lead you to prayer. Is that something you're conscious of, Selena? Well, I hope I, I hope that it does it that, that way because we are just the instruments that God is playing with, you know, to give His message to the world. It's like we are no more than His servants, and that's the only thing my desire is that people get in touch with God. So that's why I create these photos. That's why God gave me this this talent because. That's why I'm a photographer, because God wanted me to be a photographer, so I, he gave me these talents, so I need to use these talents. And it's for me, in, as you say, that, that moment that when people look at, at my work, I hope that that, mm-hmm. that moment that brings them to silence, that that's the moment that God can touch their hearts, because it's in silence that God will speak to the heart of people. And that's the problem of this world. People don't dare to give this confrontation with silence because ooh, what if they meet god they have to change their lives so it's a beautiful compliment if you tell me that my work can get to the point of of, of silence when you look at it i think uh, uh, Imale, i think it's a well-worn uh, amongst the saints and the mystics that silence is a prelude to prayer I think we can probably agree on that. But listening to Selena and in our discussion today, it, it makes me even more aware of the importance of what your charity was trying to do through culture. Uh, although it, it, was, it was trying to produce something beyond culture, was it not? Yes, yes, because culture in itself is not, wasn't the aim, really. It was um, that human relationship, restoring human relationship, um, and through culture, because as I said, you know, like you cannot separate. Uh, there is something about, um, you know, our thinking nowadays, we think, and I, I said it also last time, you know, like either or. For me, there is no separation. You know, culture is part, culture is not the aim. It is really in service of, of human beings. And what I've seen living in, um, in a Muslim country, living in the Middle East, living in Europe, uh, visiting different countries, even going to China and, and Asia, there is something about beauty that unites immediately. Yes. There is, it's a language, it's a universal language, yes. honestly. You know, like, so this, yes. is, this is, if you cannot, if words cannot express how you feel, you show an image or you sing a song, and then you mm-hmm. can connect with these people. Absolutely. And th- this is where I think that image is very important so it can be used or abused you know like this is really um, you know she was talking about a talent but i think it is more than a talent it is it's an instrument it is it's a weapon that you can use you know like either to defend yourself and others or you can use it to kill others really in like either spiritually or even materially uh, we have a lot of problem with radicalization you know this is one of the things that i have studied recently and I can tell you one of the problems that I can see uh, lying at the heart of radicalization, everyone thinks that is religion. It's not. It's really that um, there is a problem with the way, with the culture surrounding them and how they have perceived that culture and the narrative that they have received. So when you haven't seen beauty, when you cannot discern beauty in other people and other cultures, it's very, very difficult to love that culture. So yes, I think that people like Celine has a lot to do. And one of the things that I was trying to do, um, you know, like Aradin was the first stage. Now, you know, like I have moved to another charity that I'm starting. And one of the, of the programs we have is Women for Culture, because I believe that women have a lot to offer and they, they have that healing power through culture, through the uh, stories through the way that they speak the language as well, to heal a lot in our society. So yes, definitely, it is. Its culture is not the aim itself, but it's a means. It's also I, 
I, and also, I said at the start that you were you were wanting to start a conversation. It's also a sort of meeting place, would you say, Amal, for people? You know that Muslims, Jews, Christians in the Middle East, can, they can all meet around culture in a way that maybe they can't uh, through, through other things, politics or theology or whatever. Yeah, this was my experience, you know, in 2014, 2015 and 2016, really, you know, like I've met many people from different cultures and backgrounds and religion, religions, and it is amazing how they all could connect suddenly they realized how important it was what we were doing and many other people started their uh, initiatives which i'm very proud of them you know so we were really trailblazers but at the same time it was we were, we were reminding people someone had to remind people from time to time how important culture is and as i said you know it was a seed planted by my family especially my grandmother it is something that i owe to the world it is not uh, you know because you are clever or you are lucky or you have a genius um, idea. It's not that. It's a mission, really. You know, it was a mission that was entrusted to me, and suddenly, you know, like it took, unfortunately, a little bit too long till 2012, 2000, 2013, before I realized this is the time I have to do something about it. And and that and and you felt very much called. I think. I mean, this is very much your calling uh, in 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 the cultural sphere. Uh, Selena, do you see your uh, photography, your your art as a calling, as, a, as, as part, almost like part of your Christian calling? Uh, yes, uh, as long as God wants me to, yes, because it, for me it's really the place where, where, where I meet people and it's in all those different worlds. It's like, as you said, it's the fashion world, it's the world view days, it's in the Catholic Church, but it's also in the show business. So it's a complete open world and I, for me, that's an amazing grace because that's what Jesus would do. I believe that it's, it's he who said, you need to go into dialogue with everyone, but remain yourself. And that's exactly what I try to do. Like just remain Selena, remain this, this child of God and pray to stay humble and to get in contact with everyone. And if God wants something, that something happens or somebody gets touched, then it's all thanks to him. And yeah, so for well, me, it's really, yeah. Well, let's, let's look at some of your uh, artwork, uh, Selena. We'll bring up on the screen uh, so people can look at some of the artwork. And it'd be good if you could just talk a little bit to us about what, where, where these shots were taken and what you were trying to achieve in them. Uh, yes, this shot was taken in, uh, in Congo. We were uh, in a mission for a hospital that was uh, builded there. And I was in this uh, little corner and uh, watching to the door to the right. And uh, suddenly I heard some children play. And I looked at the left and I saw a little head. And I immediately I took my camera and I took this shot. And I saw that, that at that point I took my shot. The child took another child out of it. And they run away. But for me, it's it's always, yeah, I, I love to see children playing. I love to look at the children. They have this pure innocence. And yeah, that's also something like they are untouched. They are they are like, yeah, some kind of an, 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 an untouched image of God, still perfect, still ready to go to heaven. It's 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 yeah, and that fragile. Uh, look of these children they are happy they they have nothing but they are happy they they they, they are thankful for the little things and yeah what, what 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 exactly was this building it looks it looks like a sort of very sort of um, concrete was it was was it um, was it was it a home for children or was it just where they were living it was a, a old hospital they were building somewhere in a, in Congo, a few yeah. hours from Kinshasa, and it was really in the middle of nowhere, in a village where there was really need for a hospital. So we had to make a mission of that. There was a camera team and I was a photographer. Wow, so let's look at another one then. This is a little bit sort of more traditional. Um, it's very beautifully put together, if I may say, Selena. Yeah, Amal, what, what do you see when you see, see an image like this? Again, you know, like in the last image and this image, it's really the light that is 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 amazing. You know, like it, it's telling me a story through the light. You know, yes. it is there is something of divine presence in last uh, image when you see these 
children with the light in the background and here you have um, a love story with the light behind it. It is just, you know, it expresses everything really. This is what um, human love is about, you know, like you have to have that light shining behind you in order to, to be able to to build a new life. So it is, it is beautiful. It is you know, like a, it really striking all that presence of light in her pictures. I, I would say, Selena, that this is a picture which um, superficially could be glanced at and then glanced away from. But as Amal's talking, you know, I'm very conscious of your use of light, the luminosity within, within the shot, but also the use of shadow. So there's that kind of play, which, you know, married life is a combination of joys and sorrows and all the rest of it. And it's like, and, and I love the way you, the, the, the husband and wife, uh, the brides and, and bridegroom are sort of together in the midst of this light and this dark, this swirling. They are, and they're holding each other together in it. So uh, I think it's beautifully framed. Um, and so... Um, this one, uh, Selena, what were you, this is a very unusual shot. How did you achieve that? Tell us how you got that. Were you underwater? Uh, actually, I built a, a table and on that table, it was a, a glass uh, plate with uh, a, a little, how do you say in, in, in English, clay. Um, yeah. clay. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I put three centimeters of clay around that glass table and then the person uh, who had to stand on the table was going to stand on the table so I could just go lie under it on the ground so it was it gives the effect of underwater so this is a shot like Jesus walking on the water wow and so mm. that, yeah. that's wow. like and also like like yeah very so as my other images are, are more creating the the art wor world but this is really like a shot from uh, the Bible actually like you know and if you mm. sink in the water Jesus will put his hand through the water and he will pull you up it's like you just need to look up to the light because there is this little uh, touch of light in the left mm. of the, the corner uh, also you can see it on his feet because he's the light that that walks on the water which is the symbol of evil so he conquers the evil and he will save you out of this water so mm -hmm. it's a shot when when you got the feeling that you're drowning that you just need to look up look up because Jesus is always there to save you. Emal, have you seen anything like that? I haven't. No, it's it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it's one of my favorite scenes in the in the Bible, and here you see someone who has the perfect uh, way of of showing it. You know, like it's, it's amazing. It's really but, amazing. And but, again, you know, like it's the the light in the corner that absolutely. you see. Jesus is there. It's again, you know, like it's amazing. But but what I what I also love about it, Selena, is that it works on different levels. So, so the first thing is that uh, when I see it, I just think it's a wonderfully unusual shot. And I'm trying to work out how, how did you take that, you know, so, so that kicks in. And then you start to say, yes, it's about walking on water. And then it takes on a whole new dimension. It opens out, if you like. So yeah, I love that sort of surprise because an atheist could look at that and get a lot out of it and start to think. But uh, as Amal and you uh, Christians coming together, you start to connect the dots. It's very, very beautiful. So this, this is the next picture you're talking about, Celine, is it? The, the, the light on the cross there, yes. Very, very beautiful. I mean, again, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood lighting department would have probably taken a whole afternoon trying to get that uh, to look so good as it does. Um, can I ask, just from a professional point of view, did it take a long time to put that together? Were there many takes? Uh, one shot. One shot, wow. Incredible. I, it was amazing that whole movie it's it's that's why when you ask me the question what I am like for me it's in the first place like Christian then photographer and but a cinematographer it feels dif difficult to accept that it's strange to say but that movie is the only movie I ever made like for me it was like God is the director of that movie sure. when we entered that church it's 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 crazy but the light was on the cross I, it was not meant to be for me when I wanted to take there a shot that the light was on the cross. Imal, does that image move you to pray? It does. My gosh, you know, like it reminds me of so many um, churches, beautiful churches in Belgium, where you have the the paintings, the beautiful paintings, religious paintings, and the cross, where you know, like the light shines in a way that it is on the painting at different times of the day and 
it's it is moving it's again you like is that play of the shadow light and shadow you know um it's our our life you see that we the, there is shadow in our lives but again you have the cross there with, you know like, which is really the light that you are looking for you know like you cannot yes. look for the light somewhere else you know like you have to go to the cross in order to find the light is absolutely beautiful. What I also love about that photograph, Selena, is how the cross is the focal point. All the light, all the darkness, everything circles around and, 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 and places itself at the foot of the cross. It's very, very beautifully done. Can I just ask, going on from what Amal was talking about, about uh, Belgian churches, you're in the city of Bruges, which is a very famous cathedral. Um, I'm wondering if, if you grew up in Bruges and you were familiar with the cathedral and if that was something formative in your sort of artistic experience, your religious experience, obviously, but also your artistic experience, how those medieval uh, craftsmen had put together something so beautiful using their own understanding of light and shape. Well, actually, I did not grow up in Bruges. I am from the countryside of Brussels. So I grew up around in fields and nature and, and, and yeah, a totally different environment. So for me, it was also there where, where my artistic way of, of, of life yeah. found its way in, in, in the silence of nature and the beauty of nature. It's, it's, but this cathedral also, it, for me, it's also very inspiring. Like if you enter the cathedral, you can see the beauty of the windows. When you're outside of the church, you, you, you don't see the beauty of the windows. So for, that's the same with our faith, like get in the heart of the church, then you will discover the beauty of our church. And it's inspiring, all it's inspiring, but all in a different way. So it, it's, it's, yeah, it's different. Mm. But, uh, I grew up in the countryside. Yes. Amal, do you know Bruges Cathedral? I know because there is the, um, the relic of the precious blood of Christ and I went to the procession, if I'm not mistaken. I hope that is still done now, not now, like in the time of Corona. But um, yes, yes, it's beautiful. But it is not only the, um, the Cathedral of Bruges, but of Antwerp and Ghent. And any, you know, even if you go to any church in Belgium, you know, like even if it's a village, church you will find the love of god there i mean it's amazing how beautiful belgian churches are and what i find moving is the love with which paintings and the buildings and how they look after the church um i mean you see love behind it um i i hope that we can restore that that love again but you know you cannot go to a belgian church without any church, you know, like even in the, in the village where my mother is living, we have beautiful, beautiful churches. And it's not only because, you know, people here are artistic or they love art. I think that many people love art, but here that you have people who love art and they love Our Lady and they love God. So, you know, it is, it's like for me, a book. I mean, you go to any Belgian church and you can read the whole history of redemption in these churches it is it is yeah. absolutely they are stunning really even well, you know like uh, confessionals tell you uh, a story so yes. it is yeah but i think i think if i'm correct amal that was the whole purpose of the sort of medieval craftsmen the, the stained glass windows the the beautiful buildings that they constructed because remember a lot of people at that time the vast majority perhaps couldn't read or write uh, and they, the, the faith was passed through these sort of images, you know, in some ways we like to think we live in an image conscious, image obsessed era, but it was a different type of image that the medievalists were playing with, but it had the same idea of transmitting something, something of the, the goodness of God, the beauty of God, the luminosity of God. Um, do you see yourself then as a continuum, Selena? Do you see yourself working in the same way with light and shade as the medievalists who created the beautiful stained glass windows in cathedrals? In a certain way, we are all meant to work with, with the light of God. So actually, yes, because people of yesterday, of today, of tomorrow, we are the same children of God and we are all meant to be workers of God, of workers of the light with a, with a big letter. So, yes. Now, you talk about light and there's also a lot of darkness in the world. And uh, Selena, in your profession, a lot of people have used images to corrupt people, to, to abuse people or, or, or to, to lie, 
the image the images as you know can be distorted in all sorts of ways so there's a kind of and and Amal when, when we look at uh, the work you've been doing in the Middle East how how images are obliterated to again distort a narrative there, the artist has a great responsibility which isn't talked about as much as their gifts and their talents but uh, a talent and a gift from God comes with a great duty would you say mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, you know, as I said, image cannot be uh, created on itself. You know, an image is a story. It has a background. It, it has a history. It tells a story. We are still in love with paintings that have been created three, four or five centuries ago. You know, they still talk to us because they are telling us a story that we can recognize ourselves. So I think that an artist cannot um, extract himself or herself from the bigger story that is there you know there is the the greatest art i think is the the world created by god and if you if you are not connected in the right way with that greatest piece of art then there will be something wrong with the art would you take that a stage further maybe uh selena in terms of because you're working with images and yet we we as christians we as catholics understand that we're created in the image of god and is there an aspect in your work, Selena, where you're capturing fragments of that, that image of God in, in all its sadness and all its joy and all its pleasures? Uh, and do you think, Amal, that's why we're so fascinated with it as well, that, as you say, three, four, five centuries of painting the human face or the human image, we're, we're fascinated not so much by the image, maybe, but what lies behind it. What do you think, Selena? Uh, yes, because it's actually in this image also, it's like, you know, this woman tells a story. It's it's like for the world, it could be like, oh, this is an old woman. She has a disease or whatever. And But for me, this is like, this shows the beauty of life. It's a woman who has lived. It's actually, if you look at, 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 at the story on her face, she, she has... She, she, the people who are using this Botox stuff these times, they try to be much more beautiful. But honestly, this woman is much more beautiful than all those other women who try to fix them up with all those stuff. So for me, it's like this, this, this pure beauty of God should not be touched. And that's the point in this world. How shall I say the, the, the talent that uh, people can have, it can also be used in a bad way because because you have this enemy of God, uh, the devil, who also is like uh, inspiring his people and also people with met much talent, but it can be used in a different way. So for me, it's, it's, it's because we believe in God, it's, 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 it's a desire to fulfill the hearts of people uh, with, with light as much as possible, because it's our hope. This world is, is, is dead without God and it's a dark world and you can see this, this, this hope of light in the, in the eyes of, in this image also of this little child, uh, the hope that, that the light of God can give us because that has never the last word. That's what we believe and we are here for life and I want to show people that there is life even in a dark world. This image of this church of the Onze Lieve Vrouw are is, is next here to my to my house in, in Bruges. It was an early morning and uh, the sun was rising and there was mist and it was like, wow, it's, it was almost like an eclipse, like like the darkness is trying to hide this sun to, to, to but but the sun of Christ, the sun, the light, it, 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 it will it will it will win. The, 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 the gates of hell won't conquer her. So it's like this image, this power of, 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 of a rising church. Uh, for me, this is a very hopeful image because we are living in dark times. But I have this feeling that we are going through uh, a silent Saturday and that the period of, of a new born church is, is very near. And that, that makes me very hopeful that the light and the sun will rise up again and will be born and make a union of all people in the world. And maybe I can sound like, I don't know, but it's, yeah, for me, that's the hope I carry in my heart. And this colorful world, uh, I want to share with people and I want to encourage everyone because I really believe that things will change and that, that, 
that God will intervene yes. and that we all will be one with him. Emal, uh, that was very beautiful what Selena just said there, but in some ways she's talking about art and, and her faith. Your, your charitable enterprises are, are, are trying to do the same thing, are they not? They're trying to remind people of this, this beauty that, that transcends who we are in a sense, but also leads us to the transcendent. Yes, indeed. Yeah, thank you for that. And, you know, like I, I, I've heard a word which I love very much, which is the word hope. This yes. is what you do, you know, like when I go to uh, war zones, um, you see suffering, you see a lot of ugly things, you don't see beauty around you, but suddenly you see that beauty of human relationship and hope. And it is only hope with hope. If there is no hope, you cannot do anything. So it is, again, beauty is there and you remind them of what is beautiful in their life, what has been beautiful in their life. And God has always been part of that hopeful story that they have, yes. you know. Yes. So it is when she is talking about image and beauty, of course, but image and beauty is really, it's conveying that hope that we have in, our, in us. And um, it's, I, yeah. I, I, she, I, I, I think you're absolutely right, Amal. And, and I'm afraid our European journey is about to close. Can, can you believe that we've spent an hour already to, talking about this? It's, it's flown by. But I, th I think I, I love the way we're ending on hope. And it's a hope, a hope that beauty leads us to hope. And it reminds me a little, it reminds me a little bit of uh, who was the most beautiful person in the world, in the whole of creation, other than our uh, blessed Lord, which is probably Our Lady, uh, the most beautiful mother but also our mother of hope, you know, that beauty and hope are combined. That beauty, that beauty makes us hopeful. It makes us think that maybe the world could be better, maybe we could be better, uh, uh, our cultures and our societies. And I think it's much needed at this moment. So as we're pulling into the terminus uh, here in, uh, uh, in Belgium, I'd like to thank you, Selena, for coming on board the uh, Euro Express. I found your images and your, your way of expressing yourself absolutely fascinating. And I do hope you'll be a passenger again on this, uh, on this train that w goes around Europe on a regular basis. So for now, Selena and Amal, it's goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, thank Selena. Thank you for thank the you invitation. Kevin. It's been a really pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.